All right, what's up guys? This video I'm gonna go over real quick some of the settings here on the settings tab. If you're watching this after August 12th, there'll likely be additional settings on here. I'll try to keep kind of an updated video going over this type of stuff periodically. But for now, you've got kind of the onboarding stuff that we've already talked about in the initial video and the kind of getting started with a new research session here. You're gonna plug in your main keyword is kind of step one. Go get your top 10 ASINs, paste them back into here. And then you've got your data source hub here. This is just a area where you can see kind of all the files you're working with. The check boxes are important for two different steps. So with the current check boxes that I have here checked, all that's going to import when I have them uh, saved in the right place right now and click this step three, are the ASIN files. So it's not gonna do anything with any of these other files. The checkboxes also are important when it comes to downloading new data. If I wanna just download new ASIN files, for example, I can just check these and come up here, hit download new data and only those ASIN files from Helium 10 because that's my kind of main data source that I have selected. Uh, those are the tabs that are gonna open so I can go fetch new files. And then the process is the same. You're just gonna drag your files for, in this example, Helium 10, you would save them directly to this folder here. And you can see I've already got some in here, but uh, then when we go to import them, only those files, because that's all I have checked right now from that folder are gonna be brought in and refreshed. So it's pretty dynamic and you can kind of independently update or download different reports based on the check boxes and then which option two or three there from the menu that you pick. So um, that's kind of one point I wanted to drive home. Then obviously if you're using Zonguru for your main kind of data source, you're gonna to toggle that here. And then the link that's gonna open up is just gonna take you to the Zonguru page and you'll see this folder here changes from Helium 10 folder to Zonguru because you save it in a different place. And then another important point is the file types. So you can see all these need to be the for the ASIN files CSV format. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add those kind of parentheses format options or, or, or references down here as well. So you'll probably see that in the copy you're viewing that's not in the video right now. But um, And then we've seen this happen in previous videos where our import status updates as the files come in. Blue just means that everything came in successfully and it matches kind of the ASIN that it should have in this case. The only one that won't have a blue are the search query reports and that's because you could potentially mislabel one of them and that one shows as not found when the rest do. So you just wanna kind of verify that. All right, and then the high potential lists, competitor winners list and my top performers list, that actually ties into the listing wizard action pane here. So there's some quick action filters that you can select here from the menu. You basically just pick one of those, hit this uh, go button here and it's gonna filter your target list based on that set criteria. So uh, there's a couple preset ones here. We're gonna be adding more. There's a new tactics tool coming out too that uh, is super powerful. So it's gonna have its own kind of report that's uh, in, in line with this sort of feature. But you can, the point is you can make changes here to the criteria and it's gonna toggle that filter specifically uh, to meet those. So. All right, so this is the main section here I wanted to get to on this video. I've already touched, I think, in a previous video on the rank range thresholds. That just correlates to our uh, keyword distribution. There's a few different areas that kind of convey that information. One of them's in the upper right. So if we scroll over here, you can see the keyword distribution. And this is organic rank position one to four, five to 10. And then you got up here, the upper limits above whatever you set your upper limit to. And then it's gonna give us our number of keywords and then search volume for each of those ranges. And we've added a new feature here that I actually like quite a bit better. So if you toggle this, it's gonna be more of a kind of a customizable dashboard. Uh, but it gives you the same information, but just more on like a horizontal layout. Uh, but th the point is that these ranges tie back to that setting on your dashboard. So you can, if you wanna just see like one through 10, you can make that your first range, 11 through whatever, so on and so forth. You just wanna make sure when you're setting it up that uh, you're obviously just putting in the max here. Don't change this value. That's kind of a set formula value that, to make sure your all your ranges stay in sync. 
Your organic rank threshold, this is dynamic now, so 10 to 30 is kind of the default. You won't be able to change it on the uh, Cerebro or Zonguru options up here yet. We may make that dynamic, but this is just from a run of the mill, pretty good way to uh, allocate these metrics and then the point of all this is to just get what's highly relevant that all your competitors are ranking well for, uh, kind of weed it out and, and put those on your target list. And this that criteria does that well. But uh, what is dynamic is if you wanna see on this, the top, say 15 instead of top 10 and top 50 instead of 30, these two kind of search volume summation metrics, you can uh, edit those on the the uh, settings tab and those will be variable. And then there's a few areas up here as well that kind of totals everything. Top 10, top 30, those would be dynamic as well. So just kind of wanted to point that out. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. All right, and then the most important point of this video that I wanted to cover and spend a little time on is this file import move mode. So this is gonna be the feature that if you've got multiple SKUs and you're wanting to use KD Boosted to do research on all your SKUs, you're gonna, I think the best practice is gonna be you're gonna to wanna to make a copy for every SKU, uh, a copy of KD Boosted and name it probably the SKU or the ASIN. Then you're gonna to to turn this option on. And what this option is gonna do, if you go to your Google Drive folder, when you authorize it, there's two kind of folder structures that get created. There's a keyword sources new folder that has the ZG, H10, and Amazon, and the, but there's also a keyword sources imported folder. And what that toggled option does is anytime it brings a file in that you've selected, which we already covered, it's basically any checkboxes you have on your data hub. So if we go back here, any anything checked, so right now only the ASINs are gonna come in and get moved and then updated. Uh, but they're gonna get moved if we have this checkbox from the new folder to the uh, to the imported folder. And that clears out then your new folder for the, the next run that you do, which uh, you'd have multiple copies then of your KD Boosted for each SKU. And then each time you go to, to kind of update that specific data for that ASIN, everything would be blank then in your new folder. So you're just kind of saving all the reports and it just becomes more of a in-series process at that at that point. So I'll do a quick example here of just the ASIN files for Zonguru. I've got them saved right now in the new folder. There's nothing in the imported. So I'm just going to click uh, import data. And I'm going to hit yes. All right. And it says new data sync complete. I'm just going to hit OK now. And if I go to, you can see there it updated and everything turned blue. If I go now to my key keyword sources imported into the ZG folder, I'm gonna find all my ASIN files there. And now if I go back to my new folder, you'll find a few files, but you won't find the ASIN files. So the ZG file, which if you watch the uh, Zanguru video, that's the keyword on fire report. And then you've got the Chrome extension report there, but I, I didn't have those checked. So that's why those didn't move in move over. Those would have moved over if I would have checked that one and this one here. So um, it still says that those were found and imported from the previous run I did. Maybe I need to clear kind of all of these statuses before you do an import. That may make it a little more intuitive, but uh, that's how it's currently set up. So hopefully that makes sense. The only other option I wanted to talk about was uh, this main keyword source row maximum it, it mostly applies to Cerebro just because if you don't set a search volume minimum, which I usually recommend start at say 200 or 300 and uh, make that adjustment in Helium 10 until your uh, re record of, of rows is around, I don't know, two to 3,000 is a good number. But uh, by default, there's gonna be a 4,000 max setting here and you can remove it and it'll import however many you want but this is just a performance measure you know if you have 25,000 rows and all of them have like 10 search volume that's really uh, not really that um, efficient so um, this is just in there in place to kind of cut off that data now you do want to be careful of this because if you do have a pretty big cerebro file and you don't sort it first by search volume um, it's possible that when you save it, the 
some of the, you know, some high search volume keywords could be getting cut off. So just know that this is here. There is a warning if you click on import data and we're gonna kind of update this warning so it's a little more clear. But right here, it just talks about making sure you're importing from the Cerebro file specifically what you want and you don't have a bunch of just really low uh, search volume keywords. So that's kind of the point there. You can throttle that if you want to change to like 2000 or if you, if you always manage in Helium 10 to export 2000 rows to two, two to 3000, let's say, then that's going to be good shape there. Uh, the only other f setting here is related to the search term focus. You can hover over a lot of these. We'll be adding more kind of tool tips too, but uh, the search term report when you're viewing your PPC data in your listing wizard tab, you can either have it by um, search terms or by targeting. The metrics will obviously change depending on which one you have there. So that option is just available for those that want to toggle that. And there will be a feature right here where you can update and refresh your PPC performance. I haven't added it yet, but it should be in the next uh, iteration or version we launch. But um, that just allows you to toggle that setting. And then if you want to just refresh this section, you can see if we click on any of these, they're all values right now. So it just kind of updates those formulas and refreshes. All right, and then the only other thing I wanted to mention in this video is there is a pretty slick feature in Google Sheets called version history. You can come in here and name a version, let's call it uh, blank state or something. And theoretically, right when you save a new copy from the members area, you could do this. And then anytime you wanna get back to a blank state where it's maybe you have everything cleared out of you know this, there's no data imported. If you always wanna have kind of a, a uh, default template, you could get back to that. The other option is you can obviously always just download a new copy from the members area. You'll have to go through the authorization process each time though, so that's why it's a little bit easier if you save the blank state version. So I thought I would mention that. And let me just make sure there's nothing else. Importing files independently, file formats, correct. File formats, yeah, that's pretty crucial. I'll have a reference here. You can see CSV files, Cerebro. There's a few of them that you can, I think like brand analytics, you can do in XLS format or, or CSVs, but it needs to be CSV. Anytime there's a CSV option, it's gonna be CSV because it's much more efficient. And I mentioned that about the ASIN. So I think we're good. Hopefully this uh, settings video kind of clears up some confusion on how to set it up for multiple products and then what this import move mode does. By default, it's gonna be off because it is a little easier when you're first getting started if the files aren't moving all over the place and you can see how the import feature works. But uh, once you get comfortable with that, you can go ahead and turn that option on and then you'll be in more of a kind of a maintenance mode from then out. So I uh, will see you guys on the next training video. Thanks.